uh, is Joel Skideman. Joel uh, and his daughter Lindsay run a monoslope, deep bedded barn, wide style barn, just east of Sioux Center there. And Joel has consented to come and talk about how he manages his wide monoslope. Yeah, I'm Joel Skideman. Uh, we family farm. Uh, been we'll doing do this since I've been 16. My dad died, so he started a feedlot. And we grew it to about 4,000, and then the DNR says, uh, no, can't do that no more, so too close to Crick, so we had to do something different or quit. So we're only a mile from Sioux Center, so uh, options weren't real good for lagoon, sprinkler systems, didn't have enough land in that area to do it. So we did some looking around, and we decided to go this way with the uh, monoslope uh, deep bedded barn. So kind of the way we wanted to do it. We've had very good luck with it so far. We got two of them right now. Uh, first one was put up in 05, and then two years later, we put the second one up. Uh, as you can see there, they're both running east and west. Uh, one's a smaller barn because it's got the working facility in front of it. All cement floors. The slope is from the center both ways keep the water against the bunks. So if we do have any water blow in or any fountain leak over, it does not run underneath the bedding. Makes a lot of difference. Like on a flat table, if the water starts running, it's gonna go under this way. It doesn't, it stays right where it's supposed to. Uh, capacity is two to 240, depends how big. We put up, we've had 1,100 yearlings, 1,100 pound yearlings come in, we'll drop them down to 180 to 200. We just start a bunch of calves and put them up to 240. It just kinda depends on the, size of the cattle and what the guys want to do. They don't mind paying a little extra. To have the pens a little empty, we see a little better, a little better conversion, a little better uh, gain out of the deal. So, and uh, we got just like a four inch drop off right by these gates here. Right, we call that kind of our pit. So everything stays in, the water does not run out, the manure does not run out. It's just a drop off right there. So, oh, there we go. Okay, we got, we got um, alleys on, we got feed bunks on both sides. Uh, there's enough feed room for 300 head. There's there's 150 feet on each side. As you see, the fountains right there are in inside the pens, in the middle of the pens. I uh, got to scrape by them every week anyway, so I figured it was a good place to have the water, the spillage, and stuff. So we cleaned up. We don't have it along the walls, so we got a little more bedding packed that way to save that way, and uh, been working out really well for the. We got twice as much water space as it needs. But we found out as long as I've been feeding that more water is better for, and the cattle don't have to cross over. They're eating on the one side, they don't have to cross over to get the water. You'll be surprised that if we shut a fountain off to have to fix it, that the cattle on the other side don't know there's another fountain. They don't, they think that's where they got to be, and that's it's just kind of their their habit, and that's the way it goes. So, so okay. Well, what's that? Oh, working facility on top there uh, was built at the same time. We got enough holding capacity for four or five hundred head uh, working areas all inside loading facilities inside to back right up to the barn from the east it's uh, ground level so the cattle do not have to go up in the air to get into the truck it loads very well this works out well here for uh, holding cattle just a guy wants to buy a load and says hey you got room my other ones ain't sold yet yeah we got room so it's been working really well uh, yeah these are the two two buildings connected and the one connected to each other and then the bottom corner there is just a gutter off the front of the bunks because the floors it always is just a, a gutter going in that runs right into the pen this way we shoot it out away from it so the water when it does rain gets in there don't fly into the pens and make a mess so that's just one of my brother's ideas and it works pretty good so yeah density we could put them bigger or fuller but right now we're figuring 50 square feet work really well we're doing very well that way growing the way everybody wants them uh, plenty of bunk space um, yeah weights from 650 to 1100 pounds we put even 12 to 1300 pounders in half bats guys or poker cattle you might call them so they've been put in there too so it works well too we've had we ran them all the way up to 17 1750 and on these on these bedding packs so it's been working really well so far, so. Feed twice a day. Uh, we feed a couple different rations. We feed for a couple different people. Some of them feed all distillers, no corn. Most of ours is uh, 40, 45% cracked corn. 
some distillers, corn stalks, dry protein. That considers a ration twice a day, morning and afternoon. Uh, like the other guy said, you don't have enough bunk space really to do it that way. And with a lot of distillers in it, uh, heats up fast enough. So you've got to keep the bunks pretty well slipped up twice a day to keep them, keep the bunks nice and clean and keep it fresh for them. So. This is a bedding, to, uh, we're bedding cattle here. This is a bi-directional tractor. Um, we can turn the seat around so we can watch this better at all times. Um, we'll run six bales, six to eight bales in a, on a pack a week and uh payloader just runs in and keeps dumping them in there so we can we can bed both barns in about two hours if it's going good and everybody knows what they're doing so um yeah to clean and, and to bed them five to six hours weekly depends how dirty they are what the humidity is if they're a little sloppier it takes a little longer if they're drier if it's a dry fall then it don't take as long so but it's not too bad it's no more than working the outside pins and blading and everything else. I don't. I don't feel we, we gained we uh, gained any more hours. It maybe saved a few by when we do bed and it rains the next day. The bedding stays fresh, so it works pretty decent. Yeah, this is where we're just scraping the the sides. We scrape both sides once a week, sometimes twice. Just kind of depends what uh, what it calls for, what the weather is. We hear it's going to start freezing up. We'll clean another extra time. And if it's nice and dry and the pack is down, when new cattle come in, I don't like to scrape it as quick. I like to let them pack it down pretty hard so they don't start scraping and scratching and slipping real bad for the first couple weeks. Um, and then we start scraping them down. So this is just in the bottom. We stockpile in the back with a side dump like that and a spreader and we put it on a decent pile. And then we got guys pretty well wanting to buy it all the time. We got three or four of our own side dumps on trucks that we can deliver it further out because we are in very high manure manure area. I mean, there ain't much room for any more manure, so I have to go out a little ways with it or trade some farmers for corn stalks and they'll take this back. I take their clean ones and I bring the dirty ones back to them. So and they're pretty happy with it. I just use them for, I use them for toilet paper for a while. That's all I'm doing. So, and, and they're kind of they're happy with that. They like to see them come back dirty. So that's just the way it is. So it's been working out real well. Neighborhood neighbors have been real good about it. They're, I got a, I run a custom guy runs with me. that's got all uh, scales and everything on so we get it to the field he loads it he does a very good job of spreading they're very impressed with the way it is with a with a uh, corn stock base it can be awful clumpy but he's got verticals and he does a really nice job so we we have no trouble getting rid of it just in the spring we don't have to we'll stockpile it if it's if it's froze we'll get we'll, we can get rid of it a little quicker this way um, but right now we're moving it right now uh, we just got done harvesting yesterday so we'll start moving it different guys have been calling we can lay it as long as not a lot of snow. We can lay it on the dirt, and it stays pretty well put because there's a lot of stocks with it. It, it sticks down pretty nice. So. Uh, the curtains are two curtains. Uh, kind of fold up the top one. That's a longer one. There's a little one on top, which very seldom comes down. Neither are very seldom come down. I don't care. The little one up top does not come down very often unless there's a major snowstorm. The big one comes down like if we're bedding it for the winds out of the northwest. Uh, it's pretty hard to bet against the northwest wind and not in northwest Iowa because they'll blow right over the other side. And the guy that's watching the gates ain't very happy with me usually, so he gets a little dirty. But uh, they'll come down if the weather's going to get bad. Uh, there's times I've been up at 2 or 3 in the morning if the snowstorm is going to hit at 3, I'll shut them. I don't shut them any quicker than that. I don't like the steam that can raise out of this deal. I mean, the steam is hard on cattle and steam is hard on everything. I mean. A good cold day with a 20 mile an hour northwest wind and the sun is out, don't bother them cattle at all. They're inside, the sun is on them. They, they think it's, it's great in there. They're a little heat off the bedding pack, and so works out fine. So, yeah, there one stands pretty darn happy the way it looks to me. So, <laughs> but uh, it stays very cool in the summer. I have never had a sprinkle. I got some open yards too, and as soon as it starts getting warm, the sprinkler's on. I got mud holes. Uh, yeah, it's not good. We got to watch them really close. Uh, conversion been good. <coughs> didn't put the barns up because I wasn't didn't have good luck in my open lots. I just had to do it just to get to keep feeding cattle. So you can I got some open lots that I was I can raise good cattle in too. I got a few small ones yet that can really crank with the weather's right. Last couple weeks, the barns have looked very well compared to the outside pens. So, but it's just easier to manage this one. Uh, with the environment that works real good this close to the center and have no complaints 
people are happy with it. I haven't had any any complaints about it, so it worked out fine. Yeah, need to scrape once a week. Uh, maybe use a little more bedding than what some of the guys told me. First they said, oh, a couple bales a week. Like, well, I don't know where that came from, but about six bales works really well. Once you get your pack pretty well based, it don't take much to get it built up. You have to use a few more. Depends how many cattle you got in, depends on the, on the weather. If it's real humid out, it's tough to build a pack. If it's really dry pack, it don't take much to build, you know. So in the summertime, I think it's a little bit warmer. The pack is a little hotter. They'll stand on the edges more and make it a little wetter. That's where they like to stand and, and urine and stuff like that. But otherwise, they'll, they'll, you can sweat outside and you walk in there, it's just like a cool breeze running through there, even though there is no wind. It's just pretty, pretty, pretty comfortable. I've never, never sprinkled once in these barns as hot as we've had it. And I've had some 1,700 pounders running in there in the middle of July and I've never had a sprinkle. And they just, they keep, and they keep pretty well on feed too. They don't back off much. It, it just, really, out of that, sh stay out of the sun and they'll, They'll go right up to the edge of the sun. If it's if it's hot out and the sun is shining in, they're right on the edge of it if it's hot. In the wintertime, the sun will shine all the way to the other fountain. And I mean, they're laying out there, big black cattle laying out there in the middle of the afternoon. It can be zero, 20 below, and they're laying in the sun, they're, they're in good shape, so. <coughs> These gates is what we put in the second barn. Uh, the cattle all funnel out to the working area or to the loading facility, which works better. So we don't, uh, the other barn, did we have the other one on there? Yeah, these are the ones we did in the first barn, didn't like them. Um, one pin can go out to the working barn, the other pin has to go out the other way and then back. And the guys that, uh, yeah, I feed for some of the old, and some of you guys will know this, the old guys, if you chase cattle around the yard more than once, there's dollar signs floating around out there and they don't like shrink, so that's why I do it. So if you get it to the chute as fast as possible on the truck, and that's the weight they're going to get. We weigh them right on our scale. We got a big scale right there. So that's why we changed that, just for the flow of the cattle, that everything goes one way right to the working barn. So. Yeah, this is L. We, one, L the, one alleyway we did not slope um, away from the bunks, and the other one we did. So when it does rain, the water kind of runs away and then down. The other one likes just to puddle, and sometimes they'll run back in the pens. So that's when we did things change on this bigger barn, the second barn, we changed that on that, just like the gateway, so that works out a lot better. Yeah, there they are. It's, it's been very good for us, for the way we've had to do it. We've had very good luck with it. Uh, guys have been happy with what they see, so that's what we, what's, that's what we did with, so, so that's all I got right now. So. Okay, we got a few minutes. Do you have questions for Joel? For what questions? You have? Yes, sir. The question was because there's two barns and they're stacked. Uh, he, the question is: Is there any problems with ventilation? No, we haven't seen any problems with ventilation. We had a guy that said this is how they stack them like at dairies you know so far away we made sure they were far enough away in the slope and no we have never seen any any barn hotter or colder than the other one so 